In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this very simple picture frame that's not really a frame, but it still holds the picture on the wall, so it's kind of a picture frame. Really easy to do, doesn't take a lot of tools. If you have a cool picture, it could be a good gift. Okay, so first off, we're going to need a picture. Uh, it can be any picture, subject, size, don't matter. The only considerations should be, do you have a piece of wood big enough, or can you get a piece of wood big enough to make up the back? It doesn't have to be a single piece of wood. Since you're only going to see the edges of the wood, I mean, it could be multiple pieces glued together if need be. But to keep it simple, I'm looking for something that I can just use a single board on. So what I have here is a panorama that I shot a couple months ago of a local mountain called Mount Timpanogos. Um, obviously really wide and really narrow. And I've already measured this. If we just take a quick peek here, you can see it's just barely over five inches. So one by six is going to be pretty close. I'll have to rip it a little bit, but it's going to be pretty darn close. Now the picture doesn't, of course, need to be this big. It's going to depend on what your capabilities are with the printer that you may have at home, or if you have a local print shop that can print for you. And then you can scale it up and down from there. This is the longest I can print here at home. So this is, this is what I'm going to go with. But it really doesn't need this dead space here. So we're going to start by trimming that off. All right, we have our photo trimmed and ready to go. So next, I just need to double check my measurements so that I can go cut the piece of wood to fit. Looks like exactly five length on width. This should be 19 inches long. Yeah, exactly. So I need to cut a piece of wood that is five and one eighth by 19 inches long. All right, I've got a piece of one by six pine. This is, I don't know, maybe 20, 23 inches long. I need 19 and this is just one by six pine from Home Depot, nothing fancy. It is probably best to look for as clear of a piece as you can find, just to make sure you don't get any weirdness from knots in the wood or things like that. So first off, I'm gonna make sure I've got one square end. Spin the board around since I know this end is square. Line it up. Okay. Looks like we're good, right at 19. Now we need to trim it down to 5 and an eighth. We need to shave off 3 eighths of an inch. And this edge looks really good, so I'm going to keep that one. That'll be my reference face. It's nice and flat and in good condition. So this will be the face that I trim. Okay, we're exactly five and an eighth. On to the next step. Next I need to decide which side I want to be the face. I think I want this one here to be the face. The reason why I want to go ahead and pick the face now is because I want to go ahead and attach the hanging hardware. And the reason I want to do that is because every step after this, we're going to have some finished edges and I don't want to mess anything up with the hammer. So since I want this to be the show face, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put the mounting hardware right here. And you could really use any sort of mounting hardware that you want, I suppose. These are just what I happen to have on hand. So I need a mark for the center line at nine and a half inches. And since I forgot a pencil, one of these little stubby nails will do just fine. All right, there's nine and a half inches. Now I'm just gonna try to center this little clip above that. And since this is pine, it's really easy 
to mark where you want your nails. If I had my needle nose pliers, I would use those to hold this nail straight. Go. All right, mounting plate is in. We're ready for the next step. So for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint all of the edges. Um, I'm not gonna bother with the faces. The show face is where the picture is going to go. And the rear face, you're never gonna see. So I'm not really concerned about that. Got some scrap paper that I can squeeze some paint out onto. It's not going to take very much. In fact, that's probably too much. And start with the edges first. If you were really concerned about either face getting paint on it, you could mask them off. So I've got the edges all painted. I'm just going to put the brush on its side to clean up some of this spill on the front because I do want the show face to remain smooth because we are going to apply some adhesive. All right, that looks good. So now we'll just let that paint dry. And where this is just one of these craft acrylics, they, they usually dry pretty quick. Of course, it's going to depend some on the temperature of your workspace, but if you've done a nice thin coat all the way around. It's probably not going to take more than half an hour for that to dry. Okay, it looks like the paint is all dry, so what we're going to do now is take some Mod Podge. I'm just using this little squeeze bottle type, and we're going to apply it to the show face of the board slash picture frame thing, and also to the back of the photo. Now, if you're worried about getting the Mod Podge all over on the edges, it would probably be a good idea to go ahead and mask those off. I'm not going to. I'm not too worried about it. But just know that's an option as long as your paint is dry. I'm going to put some paper towel down. I'm going to take a different foam brush than the one I was using before and then just try to spread out a nice even layer. All right, I think that is done. I'm going to move the picture out of the way. Now we'll repeat that same step. but on the show face of the wood this time. If you brush towards the edges and your brush isn't super, super saturated, you can get the Mod Podge right up to the edge without getting any on the actual edge itself. The face of the edge, I should say. Okay, I think we've pretty well got it. Nice even coat, smoothed it out. Now is the somewhat tricky part. I'm going to take the picture, and before we apply it, make sure we know, okay, so this edge is up, because that's where the uh, mounting hardware is. So we gotta make sure and orient the picture correctly. And try to line it up with the edges. And then we've got to try to make sure if you've if you've measured correctly, your edges should match up almost perfectly. So just make sure it's true all the way down. And then you want to flatten the picture out. 
so that the glue tacks up everywhere and you don't end up with any bubbles. Um, I'm actually going to use a bottle of hot sauce because that is what I have handy down here. It's going to be my rolling pin. Okay. As far as that part goes, that's basically it. Now I'm going to take that and flip it over. Try to just let it rest, give it some extra pressure, make sure we've got the whole thing down nice and firm. And looking at this top edge, it looks like the picture is just a teeny bit too wide, which isn't a big deal. What we'll do is just let this dry. And then once that is dry, we'll take a razor blade along that edge and flush it up. And this is probably enough weight with what we're doing here, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use a can of food storage stuff. Here we have creamy chicken flavored rice. It's important that it be creamy chicken flavored and also some vegetable stew blend. And we'll just let this sit. Try not to move it so we don't scratch the picture. Let that sit for, I don't know, half an hour or so. And this is another one. It's going to depend on how warm your work area is. Okay, I've got three coats of finish on. I think it's looking pretty good. There's what looks like a, just a teeny bit of waviness in the print, and that's actually the wood grain, most likely because the Mod Podge is water-based and it probably raised the grain. So one way you could probably avoid that is right before you put the Mod Podge down, take a lightly damp rag and go over the top or whatever surface you're going to apply the Mod Podge to. Go over that with a wet rag, let it dry, that'll raise the grain, and then just lightly sand it with like 220 grit sandpaper by hand, and that'll minimize that effect. I've got a little bit of an orange peel texture to it as well. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera or not. I think that's probably just from the coats being a little too heavy, but it's not bad, and I, I'm still happy with the look. So there's just one thing left to do. I'm going to flip this over. For the last thing, I'm just going to take some of these little self-adhesive rubber bumpers to put on the back and this is just to hopefully keep the picture from shifting around and stay level and now I think we're ready to hang it That's all there is to it. That is how you make this simple DIY, not really a picture frame, but sort of a picture frame, picture frame thing. Could be a quick and easy Christmas gift or just something for your own home. I think they look kind of neat and they don't suck as much to make as a regular picture frame does. So hopefully that's helpful, gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of the things that I do in my shop, please subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah.